if you violate these laws, here's what you can be subject to in penalties. You can be sentenced to 10 years in prison and a million dollar fine if you violate these rules. So I can actually see it now. There's two guys sitting in prison and one goes, what are you in for? Murder. What are you in for? Tie-in agreement. <laughs> if you're a corporation, look at that number. A hundred million. You can be fined a hundred million dollars. All right. So once again, you got questions, email me, Raymond at realuniversity.com. So now let's take a uh, divergent and go into some more things about the brokerage. There are some professional organizations that you will join and you will adhere to the rules. The most common one is the big mama Luca called the NAR, the National Association of Realtors. They are the largest trade organization in the United States. They are actually the second largest lobbying power that I think is either behind the Teamsters or the NRA. They are the government agency that actually oversees all of the licensed members that join the NAR. Okay. So I want to go over and touch on an important concept. And we have talked about this before where we actually have taken some words and redefined them for us. Uh, like land being a good example. Um, here is a word that most people use interchangeably all the time, incorrectly, but you need to know the difference and now you will. There is this word called a broker. And this other word called a realtor. The word realtor is always written in capital letters and has the trademark symbol behind it. It is a reserved word and it is actually owned by the NAR. So what I'm telling you is this. A broker is a level of licensing. You can get a salesperson's license. You can get a broker's level license. Indiana, we only use one. A lot of states have gone to that. Some states like Florida, Virginia, uh, Colorado still use the two levels, salesperson and a broker. But the key to understand is the word broker means a level of licensing that a person has achieved either through experience or examination. <clears throat> the word realtor is a broker who has joined the NAR and now can use the word realtor. And it's pronounced realtor, not realtor. All right. Everybody says realtor. It's realtor. All right. So what I'm telling you is this. You can get licensed and not join the NAR. For lack of a better word, I want you to think of the NAR as a union. You can get your real estate license and not join the union. Just like a plumber can get a plumber's license but work independently and not join the union. A real estate broker can take this class, become a broker, and stay independent of the union. Don't think of this like an independent, meaning a sole proprietor. What I mean is they chose to not join the union. They cannot call themselves a realtor. They are not. So a realtor is a member of the union. A broker is a level of license. There are plenty, <clears throat> plenty of brokers out there that chose to not join the union. Remember this real estate world that you are working in is not the be all end all. 
There are a lot of other people, most notably commercial real estate brokers. They may not join the NAR. The NAR is a union of residential real estate professionals. Now, you can do commercial while you're a member of the NAR, so don't get that confused. But typically, when you go see the big companies like Marcus and Millichap and Cushman and Wakefield that are all over the world, they are probably not members of the NAR union. They are not members of the residential. Therefore, they are not, by definition, a realtor. They are a real estate professional. They're licensed. They can earn a commission. They can list properties for sale. They just can't use the word realtor because they are not. There was a number of years, uh, about three or four or five, in that early 2000s where I only did commercial real estate. I was not a member of the NAR. And people would ask me, oh, what do you do? And I said, well, I sell commercial real estate. And they go, oh, you're a realtor. And I would literally go, yeah, because I didn't want to have to explain to them. Now, you and I know the difference. You can be a broker without becoming a realtor. Now, why would you do that, you say? Good question. Because the real, the NAR and the realtors use this thing called the MLS system that lists properties for sale. We're going to get more in depth into this later, but MLS stands for the multi-listing service. This is where you go to look at the houses that are for sale and schedule the, the viewings and all of that, which is what re residential real estate agents want to do. So almost all real estate residential based companies like the Tuckers of the world, the Keller Williams, the Remaxes, the Modulin Group that deal in residential are in fact members of the union and are in fact realtors. There are companies out there that sell residential. Uh, there's one called Whitetail Properties that sell a lot of hunting land and recreational land. They are not members of the NAR, therefore they are brokers, but they're not realtors. Make sure you understand that correlation and that difference. Now, inside of the NAR, the National Association of Realtors, there are a whole bunch of subgroups that you can become a member of if you would like to do that. Not a big deal for us as far as the testing goes. There is no question on any test in any state that asks like, name four subcommittees in the NAR. But there's all these specialties. You can be an investment manager. You can be a counselor. You can be a woman's council on real estate, which by the way, this one right here is actually the largest subgroup, all right? Now, because you join the NAR, there is a set of ethics that you must abide by. And if you remember back to how we actually started this conversation, I told you that one of the things that license law does was describe how you act when you're licensed. Well, if you join the NAR, you have a further set of conditions called the Code of Ethics. We are not going to go over the Code of Ethics in this class. It will actually be uh, taught to you by your broker, but there are 17 canons is what they're called or 17 articles that say you can't do certain things. An example, you can't practice law. Well, we know that we're not licensed, but we actually have an article that says as a licensed real estate agent or a member of the NAR, you can't practice law. You can't talk bad about another fellow member of the NAR. Even if you think they are, you know, you're not allowed to say, well, they're a really bad brokerage. I wouldn't use them. That's a violation. You can't talk to another agent's client. You can't call uh, some guy that's got their house listed and go, hey, I don't know what they're charging you, but I'll charge you less. That's a violation. So there are some ethics called the code of ethics that you will abide by. Now, this last section here that we're going to talk about is technology. This technology is really hard to talk about because literally by the time we get done 
talking about it, it's going to change. We are one of the largest changing technology uh, industries right now. Technology has hit us hard you know, over the last 10 or 12 years. I remember when I started and you wanted to show a house, you actually had to call the listing broker who was in physical possession of the house key. And you had to go get the house key from that office. You would drive over and get the house key and you would check it out, write your name, and then you would take it to the house and unlock the door and show the buyer the house. Then you would take the key back to them and check it back in. I remember calling some brokerages and go, hey, I'd like to show the house. And they're like, oh, well, you can't show it at four o'clock because the key is out. Now, just 15 years later, we're into the fourth or fifth level of lock boxes. You know, we had a spin dial where the code was like your gym locker. Then we went to one that was, you know, where you had a code that you pushed in. Now we're all the way up to one that are Bluetooth enabled that you can actually operate from your phone. And as you're walking up to the door on your phone, you go boop, 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 and it unlocks the shackle so you can get to the key. So the technology in this is just skyrocketing it all the time. So it will change. One of the things they do talk about on the exam <clears throat> is this thing called the IDX system. The IDX system, which stands for the Internet Data Exchange. What the Internet Data Exchange is, is if you've ever seen a brokerage that allows a client to search the MLS system on that company's website because they are using the MLS as the basis. It's a portal. I want to put the uh, Indiana's MLS on my personal website so that my clients, I can say, hey, go to my website and search for a property. They would go to RaymondModulin.com and search for properties. And what you're trying to do is get them used to coming to RaymondModulin.com so that when they think, hey, I want to buy a house, they go to your website. You can and it's called data scraping. You can get that data directly fed into your website through an internet data exchange that requires or allows you to use the data of your local MLS system. Now, there's a fee for that. You may want it, you may not, but that's available. When it comes to these kind of things, like I said, it's just so hard to actually uh, talk about but I will give you the satisfaction of knowing there is no test question that deals specifically with social media posts or smartphones. Um, I, I know a broker currently that still has the old flip phone. And I asked him about that. Do you get texts on that? And he said, absolutely not. And that's how I want to keep it. All right. Internet advertising. Dude, there is a blue million ways to do this. The only thing I'm going to tell you is when you advertise anywhere, you must make it known that the company you work for, you must have the broker affilia affiliation. You cannot just say, call Raymond Modulin. You've got to say, call Raymond Modulin with the Modulin Group. On every advertisement you have, and I get pet people all the time that ask, well, what about, and I stop them, I'm like, time out, what part of the word every don't you understand? <laughs> because that's the answer. Every advertisement, every marketing piece, every sign, every ad must have the company you work for. All right. Even if it's your own company, your website must have the broker's affiliation that you are affiliated with. You know, it's got to say RaymondModulin.com with the Modulin Group, because you, as one of our ethics rules, you must make sure it's clear to the public 
that you are a licensed person acting for a compensation. Um, we do under this Uniform Electric Transaction Act, the UDA, now that's what allows us to do the electronic signatures. That's a, the new technology. I remember the old days and some of us old people may have heard the old adage about press hard, there's four copies. You guys remember that lithograph paper where you would put it between the pages? See, as a young kid, we used to get that in school and you'd always sniff and go, oh wow, man, because it smelled, smelled really good. 